Welcome to another edition of the Indusoft Web Studio video training series. In this video we're going to cover a second section of the active objects. In this uh, video we're going to cover the checkbox, the radio buttons, and the combo box. So let's get started. Uh, when last we left the uh, training exercise we had created an active objects screen and we covered uh, text we skipped over the text box, uh, we went to button and push button. In this video we're going to cover checkbox, radio button, and the combo box. So I'm going to close the active objects screen and create a new screen. Um, and to do this for this training session I'm going to open up the template screen because this is colored and positioned the way that I want it. I'm going to go up here to file, save as, and save this as active objects 2. Now that I have that screen created, I need a way to get to it. So let's open up the navigation. And just so we have enough room here, I'm going to push these buttons uh, back up uh, closer to each other. Copy that one down by holding the control key. I could have hit control C and control V. Now let's go change the screen that it opens to Active Objects 2. I could type into here, but I'm going to choose it from the list so I don't accidentally uh, type in the wrong thing and then go back to the button and change the label. We'll call this Active Objects 2. So now we have navigation and a way to get to this screen. We'll close it and save it. Now we've got a little bit more workspace here. So let's put a checkbox down. And to do that, I'm going to single click and release. And now I can draw a window of where that checkbox is going to be. And you can see here uh, kind of a familiar uh, looking object probably familiar with this from uh, Windows or web-based functionality. Now checkboxes and radio buttons are kind of similar. They let you select different items. And typically the way that uh, most people are used to the functionality is that checkboxes, you can uh, check multiple checkboxes and have different combinations of those. Where radio buttons very often will uh, only select one. And when you select one, it will deselect the other ones in that uh, group. So we're going we're gonna to build on that functionality. So I put the checkbox down here, and I'm going to go double-click on it and change the caption of this. Now the caption is the text that appears here. Uh, we're going to make some different uh, bakery products. Uh, the first thing we're going to make is bread. And the tag that we will put in here will be a Boolean tag called Bread Selected. Notice that uh, I put an uppercase S in there and no spaces. If I wanted a space or something in there to delineate that I could put a uh, an underscore but again tags can only be numbers, letters, and underscores and they must start with a letter. I'm gonna get rid of that uh, for now. So bread, bread selected and when I have that selected the value of that is going to be a 1 and that tag uh, has not been created yet so when I hit enter it'll ask me do I want to create it and I'll say yes, and I'll go down here and change this to Boolean. Because that's either going to be selected or not selected. So uh, we have bread, bread selected, and that's all I need for that one. I'm going to copy this down by holding down the control key. And it's pretty important that you don't let these objects uh, overlap. There is a risk of uh, accidentally touching uh, one or the other. And as a good user interface, uh, design. You should allow enough space if your user is going to be using uh, a mouse or maybe a touch uh, with a finger on a touch screen. So leave enough space uh, for them to be able to do that, especially if you're on smaller screens. Uh, leave enough space to do that. So I'm going to change this second one to be, um, let's see, what are we going to put in here? Cookies. And we're going to change the tag to cookies selected. And also make that a boolean. Now I'm not going to use my mouse for this. I can tab down to the type, hit the letter B for boolean, and then just go ahead and click on OK or hit enter. And in a similar fashion I'm going to bring this one down, and change this to cake, change this to cake selected, and enter. Yep, tab tab, boolean, OK for enter. Now that I have those three different to types of bakery products selected. Uh, I, I, I need a way to show that. Now, you know, normally you probably wouldn't have this type of feedback on the screen. Maybe you'll, you would have an LED, um, but this would typically be something that would 
either go right to the PLC or maybe select a recipe or something like that. But uh, I need a way to show you this. So what I'm going to do is, is kind of start to build on some animation features here. I'm going to use a rectangle and I'm going to place the rectangle here and the caption of that I'm going to put make bread and say OK and now I'm going to apply a position animation now the position animation does position horizontal and vertical but it also does another feature that's independent from the position uh, there's a field here called show on condition this is visibility if you will so whenever the condition in this field evaluates to true the expression uh, function, math, whatever we put in here, whatever that evaluates to true, uh, then this object will show. If it evaluates to false, it will hide. So here I'm going to put the tag bread selected. So I'm going to choose from the list. I'm going to go to our project tags, bread, bread selected. Click on OK. And now I'm going to copy this object over and change this to cookies selected. That was our second line item down. Now I need to go change the um, oops, excuse me. I need to go back to the rectangle and change the caption to be cookies. Say OK. And then copy this and change the caption on this to be cake. And then change the visibility of the uh, show on condition to cake selected. So now we should have cake selected, cookie selected, bread selected, and uh, then each one of these should show depending on which checkbox is, is checked. Now uh, radio buttons behave a little bit differently and I'm going to draw a radio button in a similar fashion to that I did with the checkbox. In this case instead of bakery items we're going to choose the speed of maybe a conveyor or the speed of the machine. So we're going to put four of these. We're going to do fast, medium, slow, and off. And uh, the behavior of this is, is similar to the checkbox where you, you click on the object itself and either selects or deselects that. But uh, in a radio button, the uh, selection deselects the other items. And to do that, they're related by the tag names. So if I go in here and I change the caption of this to be fast, and the tag now relates to uh, something called speed and this tag instead of being a boolean because unlike the checkbox where I'm either going to be selected or deselected all of these are interrelated and the tag speed uh, is going to contain a value of, of we're going to do 3, 2, 1, and 0 for fast, medium, slow, and off so here we're going to make this an integer instead of a boolean so fast, speed, and the true value will be 3 when that is selected now I'm going to copy this down and I'm going to change the caption to be medium and the true value will be 2 and keeping the same tag speed. Bring that one down, copy that down by holding down the control key. We'll change this to slow and we'll change the true value to 1 and last we're going to have the caption for uh, off and the true value will be zero. Now, uh, in a similar fashion to what I did here with these rectangles, um, I'm going to copy one of these over here, change this to uh, speed equals three. Now for the caption, I'll change that to fast. And if you can see the difference here, here we had bread and the position was showed showing when this tag name evaluated to true. Now that's just a single tag name. Uh, on this one here it's when speed equals 3. So when that expression evaluates to true, when the speed is fast and the value is 3, then this will show. So it's a little bit different. We could put an entire mathematical expression or even some scripting in there as well. So let me copy this over by holding the control key. I know that this will be uh, 2 and copy this, this will be 1 and then copy this and then this will be 0. And then I have to go back and change the captions so I'll go back into the rectangle, change the caption to medium, click on OK, fast, turns to slow and 
and this last one, the caption is off. Okay, so let's test the functionality of this. Let's close, save the screen, run this. We've given ourselves navigation to get there. Now we click on the active two. So we can see immediately since this tag defaulted to zero that it's off. We can choose slow. Notice that the off uh, gets deselected, medium, and fast. And they're all related by that speed tag. So we're off, slow, medium, fast. And cake and bread selected. We can have multiple of those selected. We can have all three. We'll just choose one at a time. Now, the way that this is set up in Indusoft Web Studio, we have the flexibility. These configurations between the checkbox and the radio buttons are very similar. We could make them act uh, the same or make a radio button as, act as a checkbox or a checkbox act as a radio button. But uh, to keep functionality to what uh, most people are used to in Windows or in websites, uh, try to stick with this functionality where the checkboxes can be uh, independent of each other and radio buttons uh, are maybe grouped maybe inside of a rectangle or a rounded rectangle, some type of frame where what I might do would be to put a rounded rectangle and uh, change the background to no fill and maybe put the word speed in here to show that that's uh, that they're grouped together and they're related to each other. Now let's move on to the um, combo box object here and everybody's probably seen this as well very similar to the checkbox and the radio buttons. This is a drop down so we get to draw how big the object is going to be and this drop down uh, is um, a list very similar to this is a combo box here and what we're going to do is go take a quick look at the help for the combo box. Now the easiest way to get there, I could get there through help uh, and clicking on this icon and then searching for that or I can open up the properties of this select the context sensitive help and then just click on the background of this, this properties box and I'm off the screen here, let's get back here in the screen now this will open up the combo box object help. And the two things that we want to look at are, are immediately are these uh, label and position fields. And the label uh, is a string tag that's going to receive the value of the label currently displayed in the combo box. So whatever line we have selected in the combo box, this uh, tag that's in here will receive the string that is uh, shown in that text and the position will receive an integer value that corresponds to the label and it's going to be an index so whatever line item we're on into the uh, combo box starting at zero uh, will be the topmost and it'll be one for the next one third line will be two so on and so forth so we know what number line we're on uh, and we know what text value we're on we're going to get into some of the advanced features as we go through this video but i'm going to start with just the label and the position so here in the label, we're going to put a tag called label tag. And you would probably put this as something more descriptive than your application that would be more related to your product or your process. But uh, to keep things uh, understandable here, I'm just going to call this label tag. Now that needs to be a string tag because that's going to receive the text from that line. So I'm just going to go in here and make that a string tag. And position, we'll call this position tag. And... Then the only other thing, oh, we need to make this a an integer. And the only other thing that we do need to do is configure our data sources. Now, we have some choices here of we can get this data from an array tag, static labels, which are uh, built into the object itself, which we'll go configure in a moment. Could be from a text file, could be from a database. Uh, if I choose static labels, then I would put the, the lines of text that I want to appear in that drop-down list or that combo box uh, here, which I will do in a moment. Uh, I could also choose a text file, and if I choose a text file, then in the settings I would point to the text file. Now that could be a, a CSV file, it could be just a text file that we've created with Notepad, it could be a, a large list, a small list, and if we have multiple columns in that file, these are the delimiters that they would be separated by. And if it's a CSV, um, which stands for comma separated variable, uh, we could just have comma here. And then if we had commas, and again, if we had different columns, we could choose this field here by entering a tag or a constant in here. 
and the first column in that text file would be column 0 or that first field. The second field would be column 1, column 2, so on and so forth. And um, we do not monitor that uh, text file for changes, so if it updates, uh, we would have to put a tag name in here to uh, cause it to reload that uh, file in from the drive or whatever, whatever location it is. Now that might be something that you do on a periodic basis. That might be something that you check at the uh, end of cycle of the machine for a new file, or maybe there's production info or some type of uh, download uh, at 2 a.m. in the morning, so you could set this up to download at 2 a.m. in the morning and, and refresh that. So there's a few different ways to do that. And again, you can also go to database as well. If we can configure it for database, uh, then we can go in and, and take a look at the different uh, database properties, which we'll do uh, in a later video. So to set this up in the most basic sense, I'm going to choose static labels. Go here under settings, and the first line item that I'm going to put uh, is going to be beer. And then I'm going to make wine, and then I'm going to make three different types of water. And I'm going to make water one, water two, and water three. Now I have five different lines in there. I'm going to click on OK, click on OK, and now I need a way to show the label tag and the position tag. So next to here, I'm just going to put some text, and I'm going to call this label and put some pound signs in that'll show my beer, wine, water, and I'm going to tie this to a text data link animation. And the tag that I'm going to choose in here is the label tag. And then I'm going to copy this down and change this to be position tag. But the position tag is only going to get a number between 0 and 5, so um, I don't need that many pound signs. So let's go back to the text drop this down to just a single pound sign and this is no longer the label this is the position now we can do some more advanced things which I'll come back in here and take a look at uh, some of these uh, other things oh position tag position tag not only receives the value depending on what line you've chosen but it can also drive what line this is in so for example a PLC or a database could change this position tag and then um, force this this uh, combo box to a particular line. Let's uh, do that by checking the input enabled and now we'll be able to type in there. Now I'm going to uh, not put a minimum and maximum value in and we'll, we'll see if we uh, can test this a little bit differently here. And so I think that's all we need. Let's go ahead and save this and run. And now when we choose the lines here you can see we have beer wine water one and water two and notice there's a scroll bar here I can scroll down to this list the the number of items in this list is selectable I'll show you that in a moment but if we are currently on beer which is position zero and we go to wine you can see that the label changes to wine and the position changes to one let's uh, go all the way down to three which will actually be water three but that's position number four because we have five objects in there it's zero one two three four and you can pick any one of those and go to those particular lines. And now if we wanted to, if the PLC was tied to this position tag, and let's say it wanted to point back to beer, that would be line zero, and it would uh, go right to that. So I hit enter on that, and it, it drove that back to um, the line zero. Now this is, um, just so you know, this is either a read or a write. Uh, it'll take that position. So that's how that works. Now let's see right now this is containing uh, four lines let's say that I wanted to drop that down to be three lines where would I do that at? I go back into that object and here under advanced this shows me that the drop down list right now is four if I wanted to change that to three maybe give it a, a different color I'll choose a kind of a lighter blue here and say OK and let's see was there anything else I wanted to do in there I can you know, format that if we wanted to, uh, I'll come back and do some of the other stuff in just a moment. I'll save that. And now when we run this, oops, run this, you can see that the color has changed. Now we have uh, three lines as well. Now we have a little bit more scrolling to do. Let's say we didn't want to scroll at all. We could change that to five lines. You're under advanced. And say OK. 
Also, there's another choice here for input enabled. I'll show you that. So now we have um, no need to scroll because we show all of those all at once. And um, you can also, if you know, if the user knows what they want, maybe this is a very long list, they can select this line, they can type the first few letters. Let's say we wanted water too, W A T E R 2. They can now type in that since we checked on that checkbox for input um, enabled. Now, another thing that I wanted to show you is, is we've been selecting lines that have been valid lines in here. Let me go back to line 0. If I selected a line that was out of range, let's say 6, uh, it goes to blank. So you may want to protect yourself from al allowing um, invalid uh, entries into that. And for this entry, what we're going to do, and this is more of a text uh, entry thing, is I can set, set the minimum value as 0, the maximum value is 4, and now it won't let me go out of that range. So now I will save this. Yes. Run it. And go back into here. Now if I type a 0 in there, great. Now if I try to type a 6, uh, it leaves it at 0. If I type a 4, I can go up to 4. Can I go up to 5? Nope, it leaves me at the, the 4 position. So there's uh, how the checkboxes, the radio buttons, and the combo boxes work. Um, thank you for your time. And if you have any questions or are interested uh, more in Indusoft, please contact please contact us at Indusoft uh, our own website or info at Indusoft.com or our email address. Thanks and have a great day.